Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today, we are going in on stretching the limits of your drums, but more importantly, the limits of your drum heads. If you've been with us for any amount of time, you will know that what we largely do here is experiment with drum sounds, and a lot of that involves experimenting with drum heads. This kind of thing can result in having to spend some extra money on things that maybe don't ultimately work out in the end, but at the end of the day, this sort of stuff is a lot of the sound of your drums, getting into the tensioning, getting into the balance of the heads, and getting into the range, which is what we want to talk about today. We'd like to take a minute also right here to mention that this episode, like many of our episodes, is entirely funded by the members of our Patreon. Patreon is a platform where you, the viewer, can support artists, creatives, us, <laughs> musicians, basically anybody that is creating stuff. And it has been a wonderful way for us to share extra footage, bonus content, exclusive series, and anything else we want with the contributors there. This is our primary source of essentially income for this business to make sure that we can continue to do it because frankly, the hours and hours that we spend researching these things, working on these things, building them, post-production, all of that, is time taken away from our other jobs. This is a way for you to directly help make sure that we get to continue to do this. It starts with the Patreon. So please, if you haven't, or if you have and you want to go check it out again, follow the link below and see if there's a tier that's right for you. Every little bit counts and it really does make it possible for us to continue this into the future. Now compared to the idea of buying a whole new drum or buying a whole new set of drums to go after a different sound, if we instead spend a little bit of time with the heads, we can really get a lot more out of these drums. We've made lots of episodes about that. But the thing that we want to hit on today is what happens when you start really moving through extreme tunings? Are we ruining our drum heads by checking out really high tunings? If we check out really high tunings, are we ruining the low tunings? Are we basically costing ourselves money that we would otherwise not have to spend if we didn't experiment with these sounds? Well, for today, we're gonna go to these extremes, we're gonna focus on the toms and the snare, and we're using pretty much the most ordinary setup that we could possibly use, which is coated 10 mil G1 batters, clear 10 mil G1 resos, regular old 3 mil snare side on the snare, and we want to take these new heads into the stratosphere, check out the links we can go to, and see what happens to them. So without further ado, I'm excited about this. Uh, here is the highest tuning that we felt comfortable tuning these two that still sounded beautiful. Now today we're ignoring the bass drum because largely I wouldn't be so concerned with this kind of thing with the bass drum. Bass drum tuning for me is a bit narrower of a range that I'd be using and I'd very rarely be trying to go tabletop tight with a bass drum in any situation I could think of. The toms and snare on the other hand, I do move around a lot with the tuning and it may surprise you or maybe not surprise you to know that I don't change my drum heads very often and that includes the batters despite the fact that I hit very hard sometimes. I choose heads instead that have a little bit more durability depending on the drums that I'm going to be using and the tuning and music that I'm going to be kind of having to facilitate. But for today we're going single ply all around again coated batters, clear resos and 
These drums sound beautiful tuned up this way. If you caught our recent episode where we were trying to make this kit sound different than it looks like it ought to, this also to me, you know, if I saw this kit in a store and I sat down and the heads were cranked up, I would be surprised. I wouldn't be mad about it. They sound great tuned like this. But it is another opportunity to kind of like quell expectations and realize that this is a functional tuning. This is a choice. It made me play different, as you'll see when we go to the next tuning. And we do need to pay attention to that stuff. Let's hear a little bit more at this tuning range. Now there is discussion around the idea of seating drum heads or cracking them, these sorts of things. Some people subscribe to the idea of tuning your drums very high when they're fresh and then tuning them down into the range that you might want to use. This is also a guitar string analogy that I've heard people say as well. These heads from Evans have a different kind of collar where this is totally unnecessary. You can just tune them to the pitch that you want right out of the gate and use them that way. So if anything, this is putting more stress on the head because they're not designed to have this done to them in any way, shape, or form. A word that we haven't trotted out much here yet, but that is specifically applicable here, is elasticity. When we are beating the heck out of these heads, or if we are tensioning them to extremes, what we are losing over time that we notice as the drum head wearing out is the elasticity of the material. It wants to give us less back, it's giving us less rebound, less tone, and all of that over the course of the material getting stretched out. This issue regarding elasticity is not unique to any particular brand or type of drum head, but each individual one, each line, each model, each thickness is going to react differently under all of these tensions. And over the course of time, they'll each lose elasticity at their own rate, both from the tension and also from the sticks hitting them. Now we're going to test essentially what we're concerned about, which is have we lost enough elasticity by cranking these heads up and playing them a bunch that they're not going to work at a lower tension that maybe we now need to use for a new playing scenario. So now we are going to tune these down into a pretty low range and see how they behave. And again, we're going to retune the batters and also the resos because we're going for a good sound. This isn't about testing any particular head. Okay, so they sound great. I'm happy with these sounds. I have no complaints about anything that's happening here. But I will tell you that up close, if you're getting really, really, really picky, there is a difference in this sound than if we had never tuned them as high as they would go. It's not problematic in any way, but it is not quite the same as it would have been if we had just gone to here and started playing. And that is because it is true, when you tension drum heads up, especially very tight, you are changing them in a way that you can't undo. It doesn't mean that they are garbage now, it doesn't mean that they don't have a tuning range anymore, but it is worth noting that if we did this six or seven or eight times, cranking them up, taking them down, and particularly if we were also hitting them real hard when they're tuned low, <laughs> under low tension, um, it could shorten their life, possibly significantly, again, depending on the player, the music, the sticks, all of that. So, you know, for me as a player and also as a listener, 
I don't really worry too much about this, and it's not because we have some kind of sweet deal where we get free heads or anything like that. My concerns are about making a good sound and a usable sound, and if I've moved them through a lot of tunings and maybe they've lost their lowest, lowest tuning possibilities, or maybe they sound boxy when they're tuned super high, I will still just kind of tune them to something that works for the moment that day. And never have I ever had somebody say to me, I need your rack toms to be tuned to these two notes or else it's never happened ever I don't think it's ever going to happen I've played a lot of shows done a lot of sessions it's never ever happened either you hit it and they like the sound or they don't so ultimately we need to not be so concerned about that and be much more concerned with just making a beautiful sound obviously even though we crank these up they're still working they're still doing the job and I'm having a blast hitting them at both of these tensions To draw a couple of analogies about what this represents, larger musical context, guitarists change tunings all the time. They experiment with tunings, they experiment with different strings, and sometimes they get stretched out and they don't sound good anymore and you change the strings. This kind of thing, all musicians do it in their own way. And getting away from being afraid of it, getting away from the idea that there are barriers that keep us from these things, that's kind of the biggest takeaway from this and a lot of the things that we like to talk about here because for a lot of other instruments it's sort of built in that you're going to experiment it's encouraged and I feel like with drums it's not as encouraged in the same way we're much more fearful generally it feels complicated it feels also like we don't want to do the wrong thing and we don't want to break something we don't want to do something we can't undo um, we want to know the numbers that things need to be tuned to so we can have everything sound exactly the same next time let's Go on a journey together and get away from that kind of like track of thinking and expand the lanes that we run in here. Starting with taking drums that maybe aren't for bop and tuning them into bop range. Take some little drums, tune them super low. We've done it here. We had a great time. There's always something to find. And that, at the end of the day, is the funnest part of this instrument. To be fair also, I know that many of you watching have not had a lot of experience going for certain tunings or experimenting with different tunings. You know, a lot of the time we are in a playing mindset and that's super important. We have to practice playing to get better at playing. It turns out we have to practice tuning to get better at tuning too. And that can be extremes. It can be moving it a little bit. It can be copying a sound you hear on a recording to your best ability. All of this stuff, it does take practice. It does, it's an ear training thing. We've talked about that a little bit in the past. We're going to talk about it more in the future. But it does lead us to inspiration. It does lead us to finding new and interesting things. And it can also inform us about the players we love. Why did they tune that way? The records that we love. Why did they choose that sound? And just open our ears to more music and, again, just more inspiration. And we hope, we hope that this inspired you even a little bit to just horse around with your heads a little bit, chase some different sounds, find out what it's like to have a really cranked up rack tom if you want to. And additionally, if you like what you saw, please consider supporting us by liking, commenting, and subscribing, and making sure that you get our notifications by hitting the bell down there. And more importantly, even than that, please check out the link below to our Patreon where we have tons of extra footage, anecdotes, symbol series, lots of things in the works that we have not announced yet. It's a great way to connect with us and a great way to make sure that we can continue to do this and bring you all of these shenanigans that we do here.